Well, unless you're making six figures at some swanky marketing agency, you probably can't stand brand building. I'm one of those people, I can't stand it. Too many mission statements and color swatches and logo placements, it's all, it's all really gross. But I believe that every artist needs to go through this process before they ever enter a studio. No cap. Hey, my name is Kevin, and I've been walking alongside artists for over two decades, helping them define their audience, build and retain fans, create compelling content, and walk along a sustainable career in artistry. I would love to invite you to like and subscribe this channel. I hope it's gonna bring value into your world, and also comment if you hear any really good information in this, let me know, or if you have any questions, let me know as well. That helps me help you in future videos. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about brand building and identity. Very important for any artist before they enter a studio. You gotta know who you are and you have to know who you want to become. I talk a lot about brand building and the importance of what it means to an artist's identity. It's just a lot of work to go through the process, which is why I believe a lot of artists just don't do it. They don't spend the time on discovering who they are and this they just go straight to the fun part let's record and let's release and let's go on tour and have a lot of fun which is great but you're really skipping over a lot of basics that I believe will make you an even more incredible artist and this idea of brand building is just it really is the worst it's way too much overthinking that goes into this process to talk about proper print etiquette and style guides and color wheels and logo placements and marketing taglines and mission statements and and visions and just all the visions. It's, it's just way too much, but I believe an artist brand is really awesome because music always tells a deeper story. It is generational. If you think about it, it is one of the most powerful communication tools that we have as a society, you can share your faith, you can share your real life experiences, and you can connect to an audience really like no other medium that I know of. And when you add Jesus to the mix, if you are a Christian artist, and we've got a lot of artists coming to this channel, I believe for tips, we do coach Christian artists, but maybe you aren't there. But if you are, you're gonna add Jesus to the mix, and I believe that's gonna be an even more powerful, um, effective tool as you get into building who you are and what you want to become. I think great artists know six things. They know who they are, they know what they want to do, they know who their audience is and what they want their audience to feel. They've thought through this. They know where they wanna take their audience and they know what their audience cares about. And as you hit those six things, are those, are those areas that you have spent any time thinking about at all? If you're anything like a lot of the artists I coach, I would probably say, no, probably not. You've probably bypassed all of that. And my challenge to you is sit down and think about those things. So let's address that first one, just who you are. Why do you want to make music? Why are you doing this? Um, I think it's important to know, not just because it's cool or you have a lot of fun doing it, but really what is, what is the purpose? Why do you want to make music? Get a little bit beyond the surface reasons there. Well, I want to help people feel things. You know, I wanna, this is a personal for me, it helps me heal as well. I wanna write about things that are important to me. All good, um, but we're gonna challenge you to go a little bit deeper here today in hopes that you can actually build a better foundation there for this question of who you are. Another question to ask yourself is why has musical expression been important to you throughout your life and what does it do for you? You know, as you, as you pursue music, there is something healing that takes place inside of you. Hopefully, unless you're writing just a really dumb pop song that has no meaning and you just want to party and have a good time. <laughs> Still okay, look, I consider myself a Pop-Tart. I grew up in the 2000s, we're talking Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Britney Spears. Uh, I, I'm, I love all the pop music that says nothing. <laughs> but I also love um, some good music that really uh, gets me, gets my emotions turning. Let's just say that for public purposes. But what are the things you tend to write and sing about? 
What are some things you, you uh, consider yourself going back to over and over again? Those deep wells that you keep returning to, there might be something there to explore of why those exist for you. What are your personal passions in life? I love asking questions like that uh, because it really gets artists thinking about what they're, what they're passionate about. Not only about songwriting and music, but maybe there are some um, social justice issues that they're passionate about exploring. Maybe there are some, maybe there are some um, ideological uh, areas that they that that they don't explore in their music that they might enjoy doing. On the flip side of that coin, what gets you upset? I love asking that question as well because passion is not only um, about all the good things and all the good that we can do, but passion can also come from all the things that are irritable to us, that really upset us. Those things might be things that we need to explore and write from uh, because they are things that we are passionate about. What gets you excited on the flip side again? So these these questions of what are your personal passions, what gets you upset and what gets you excited are all related and designed to get you thinking about some of these areas that might be really good for you to explore. And then the final question here, uh, as we explore who are you as an artist, what do you listen to? And what songs have recently impacted your life and why? And I just wanna reverse, I said something, I'm not gonna edit it out, who you are as an artist. Um, I think that was, <laughs> that's not what I meant. Who you are as a person. And I think this is important because I talk to a lot of artists who um, are, so, they have designed themselves as someone that they believe their audience wants them to be. I mean, heck, we all do this. We, we all put on that mask and we all pretend and try to fit in. And as an artist, you have so much pressure to do that, to say the right things, to not irritate anybody, to to um, change this line and this lyric. And uh, that is getting away from who you are. And here's what's really cool. Uh, we'll talk about this here in a minute. People want you as a person. They want to know the real you. So. That's what we're defining. We're not defining who you are as an artist, we're defining who you are as a person. Good job, Kevin, thank you for clarifying that. All right, a little bit more personal now. Um, again, I coach a lot of faith-based artists, uh, but I believe this is applicable to really anybody making music, and so stay with me, even if this doesn't really uh, speak to your core and where you're at, stay with me for a minute. Um, how would you describe your relationship with God up to this point? A very, uh, a very key question. You know, I think, um, I think that whole phrase: Are you walking the talk? Are you doing what you were encouraging others to do? And if the answer is uh, no, then I would challenge you to go get those practices in motion before you ever enter a studio. Make sure that you and God are good and solid, that you have the routine going, that you have the people in place to help you, because this process is not gonna be easy. It's gonna come with a lot of stress. And the last thing you wanna do is show up um, like in a, in a way that is not consistent with the message you're gonna put out there. So how is your relationship with God? When did you get saved? Like, is this a new thing for you or is this something that has been with you kind of your whole life? What was your family life growing up? And then I, I asked this question and I always tell the artists I ask this to, don't answer this because A, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a psychologist, and B, we haven't formed a level of trust that I believe needed to really truly answer this question. But I hope you have someone in your life that you can answer this with. Identify any lowercase trauma, lowercase t trauma, and any uppercase trauma in your life. And just ask yourself, are you open to these yet? Have you explored them in depth, not only for yourself, but with others? If the answer is no, could you be? Could you actually begin going there with someone? And what's just for you and God to explore right now? You know, you don't need to open yourself up and explore every single corner in order to move forward in what you are wanting to do. That is not a requirement. God is not asking that of us, and I don't believe our audience wants that. I think the journey is lifelong. You're going to, you're never going to arrive, right? You're gonna be doing this for a while. So begin that process though, and begin exploring some of these things. Make sure you have someone in your life that you can truly explore these things with. So back to this idea of Authentic authenticity. I don't know if you knew this or saw this, but Merriam-Webster Dictionary actually named authentic their word of the year for 2023, which I was like, 
I was blown away because if you look at their list, I've got it right here. If you look at their list of words that they've chosen, um, not so not so encouraging. Like uh, 2016 was surreal. 2017, feminism. 2018, justice. Then they went with they, uh, the whole pronoun they. Um, then the pandemic and vaccine. We're getting a little heavy. <laughs> 2022, it was gaslighting. And I'm just looking at the list going, can we come up with any less fun list like ever? Like this is this is the worst fun list. If, that, if that's the right the right words there, um, like every one of these words are are heavy and divisive in our society, and they come with so much baggage. And so for authentic to arrive behind them, I think is very interesting. Because if you look at what's happened this past decade, we are more divided than ever. Um, our society is just at odds in almost every single direction. And I think people are getting really sick and fed up of just all the fake drama that everybody has. They want real. And they want that from you. They want real. Them selecting that word authentic, that's the world is starving for real. So I'm gonna give you a cap tip and we'll sprinkle these in throughout these videos and uh, just little things that I think you should pay attention to. And here's the first one. Your fans don't deserve one more mask in their life. They've got enough. That's the first tip I can give you here. Um, they don't want another person telling them who, uh, telling him who they think they need in front of them. They want you, they wanna get to know you. They want the real authentic you. And here's the scary part. That might mean you, you'll be rejected. That might mean some people will look at that and go, you know what, I don't want that. But if you've done this core work, you're okay with that because that's who you are. And you're not being rejected, they're rejecting whatever issues they have. You can't get everybody to like you, but you can show up you and say, hey, take it or leave it. This is who I am. The world is starving for real and it's hungry for authentic. It's craving relatability and it desires emotional connection. These are the things that you can provide. So as we talk about what you want to be, I've got a little exercise here that we're gonna do as we close this video. And I would just encourage you to go through this. Now we're not gonna do it in real time because it takes usually 20, 30 minutes to maybe come up with the initial list. And then I ask that you spend some time with that list here in the next coming weeks or two. And, and so um, you can hit pause, you can write some notes and maybe come back to this. That would, that would be a great idea. But I'm just gonna walk you through the process. Now, I have taken artists through this and it has been beautiful. And I say that with all sincerity. They've always looked at me going like, what are we doing? This is dumb. I don't like, I don't understand it. Uh, but I have received feedback over and over again about how beneficial the end result has been. And so here's what we're gonna do. Um, knowing what you want to be has nothing to do with worldly success. It has everything to do about defining who you are as a person. So once you get some pen and paper here, uh, or if you're on your phone or laptop, maybe just open up the notes screen. And I want you to write down as many words and phrases as you can think of that describe you and your personality. You might hear that and go, what? <laughs> like I've had artists stare at me for minutes and not be able to come up with one. And I think, um, I think what they're, they're, they've been looking for is permission to brag on themselves. We hate this. Artists hate this. We hate talking about ourselves. We hate um, giving ourselves pats on the back and all the accolades, but I'm challenging you to do that here. I'm giving you permission to do that here. And I'm gonna help you. Maybe you're a helper. Maybe you're generous. Maybe you're empathetic. You're loving, you're kind, you're caring. You've got high standards. You've got integrity. Maybe you're adventurous and just like to be pushed. Uh, maybe you don't take a no for an answer. Maybe you're passionate. You don't give up. You're inspired by God. You like being challenged. So these are all phrases and words that might describe you. Feel free to use them and write them down. We don't own characteristics at all. <laughs> maybe that whole list was like, wow, you're reading, you're reading my language or you're talking my language, Kevin. Okay, great. Write down, we're, our goal is to get about 20 to 40 words and phrases. The more you can get, the merrier. And I've noticed that as you get into this, you get stuck a couple times, push past that stuckness and try to get to that uh, 30, 40 list. It might take you a couple rounds. You might have to set it down and come back to it. You might chew on it for a week and keep that notepad with you. 
but try to get that list. And then here's what I want you to do, it's something you're not gonna do right now, cause you don't have that list, unless you like seriously know yourself and like <laughs> just hammer that out. If you did, congrats. Um, narrow it down to about your top 10. What are those 10 phrases and words that really define you? And then we've got two more. You can see where this is going. We're gonna narrow it down to five, and then we're gonna narrow it down to three. So write the numbers 10, five, and three. And we're looking for those three words and phrases that truly define who you are, that speak to that core really strongly. And we're gonna write a mission statement that involves those three. That mission statement is gonna talk about you and who you are, what you want to do, and who you want to do it for. So I'm gonna read you one from an artist, and I love, I love hers, and uh, I'm gonna read that to you right now. I will be an authentic Christian artist. Now there's her first word, authentic. You heard it. Um, she wants to be authentic and real. So I will be an authentic Christian artist inspired by God's call. She knows she's a faith-based, excuse me, she knows she's a faith-based artist, and she's putting it right there in the first sentence. I will write and share music that speaks about my ongoing journey to Christ, including challenges, failures, miracles, and growth. And I think that sentence really helps expand what being authentic means. She's gonna talk about the challenges that she's faced, some of her failures, oof. <laughs> like Artists who can talk about their failures in front of everybody, huge. Miracles and growth. I'm excited to share my relentless passion for music. And those are her other two keywords. Relentless, she always goes. She pushes through whatever she's facing. And I love that about, I love that word, that relentless pursuit. And what is she pursuing? Passion. She, she is passionate about passion, which kind of sounds repetitive, but for her, that makes sense. Her relentless passion for music within the body of Christ and those who have become disengaged. See, now she's defining her audience, who she's going to go after, those who have become disengaged with their faith and with the church. And her goal is to bring all of her listeners into a closer walk with God. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. And, and for her, this has given her the ability to anchor into that as she gets ready to go into the studio to record her new music because she can write music and she can record it and she can bring it right back to this mission statement and go, okay, does this apply? Is this, am I actually walking out of who I am, out of the core of who I am? Or did somewhere along the way, I deviate into what someone else wants? You see, as an artist, you're going to get a lot of voices coming into your head. Um, maybe they're people around you. Maybe they're other artists you're listening to. Uh, maybe, it's a, maybe it's news that you're reading, but a lot of different influences that are going to just pull you in so many directions and you have to be able to anchor back into who you are. Why? Because that's what you write from. Why? Because your audience wants it. They want you to be you. They want you to be real, which is why this whole process is so incredibly important. And uh, that's all for today. Now here's the deal. There's more to this. There's more to this process of defining your identity and branding for artists, but we're going to uh, split this up to a couple conversations. Next video, we're going to talk about knowing them. This one, we talked about knowing you. Now we're going to talk about knowing them, them being your audience. Who are they? What do they look like? What do they listen to? How old are they? Uh, what do they smell like? Which is probably super weird. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to be a summer festival music artist, you probably need to know what your audience smells like. It's just, just a heads up is going to be really important. <laughs> so we're going to talk about all of that. Hey, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me, tell me what you think about um, this content. If you went through this process of your mission statement, tell me how it was. Give me your three words. Give me that mission statement that you came up with um, and help me help you in the coming videos as we work hard to be better together here at CAP. Take care.